I'm Sal Mineo, and these are teenagers. They come in all shapes and sizes, and range in age from teeny boppers to 19-year-olds. But just like in the old days, teenagers have always shared one thing in common. They've always found a unique way to group self-expression. Hey, just like always, clothes have been the groovy way of really expressing yourself. And teenagers can always be counted on to do something very original and uh, very self-expressive. There's some girls who express themselves in the more simple look. Others do so in highly feminized slacks. And for hemlines, well, this may be the long and short of it. But how much short in a skirt get? Hair has always been very important. Yes, even with boys. It's been very short and even longer than a beetle's. But girls have always had a lot more ways to express themselves through their hair. Why, they could change its color completely. And they can even simplify the entire thing and just go out to a store and buy some hair in any color they like. They can curl it. They can wave it. And they can even iron it so it comes out nice and straight, uh, split ends and all. It's necessary to take a good look to see which is the girl and which is the boy. But that's not true for all boys, especially for those who are trying so desperately to prove their manhood. However, the more personal, the more individual way to prove your manhood was to play chicken. And at one time, a chicky run was considered the best way to prove manhood, dead or alive. For girls, the matter of being chicken and proving yourself as a woman is still frequently based on accepting this kind of dare from a so-called friend. Yes, even adults admit it. Growing up isn't easy, especially if you try to keep up with the dares and fads of some of your more advanced friends. Two of the more advanced fads have to do with drugs. So why do you want to be down when you can be up? Please just try it once, okay? Now there's a brilliant argument for you. Why, with the help of a good, kind friend, you can be turned on, make the scene, blow grass, smoke reefers, or pot joints, or Mary Janes. Uh, those are just a few of the cool, uh, groovy names for marijuana. And if grass doesn't make it for you, baby, and especially if you need to be in, well, you can always drop a camp of acid. Now, that's the real stuff. Very, very cool. Very, very groovy. <laughs> now, everybody who takes it admits that there's always the risk of a bad trip, a bummer, <laughs> a freak out, even a flip out. But why be lame, baby? Give yourself a real kick. Yes, yeah, a kick in the head. Is LSD merely another fan? Uh, another dare? Another kick? Is it insight? Or insanity? What do America's leading scientists, doctors, and psychiatrists working with people taking LSD say? As we see it, the typical psychiatric ward, LSD is certainly much more than a mere fad. Right now, we have over a dozen people hospitalized because of acute symptoms resulting directly from their taking LSD. Bizarre fatal accidents and suicides have also occurred in LSD's users. Because of this, we say, that LSD is not just a fad. People are seriously disturbed, some even dead. What is LSD? How does it work? When did it all begin? It all began in a laboratory very much like this one. In 1938, 
Dr. Albert Hoffman in Switzerland was looking for new drugs in the treatment of migraine headaches. He had been studying substances that came from the molds that grow on rye plants. Now it turned out that these substances were of no use in the treatment of migraine headaches, but subsequent investigation showed that they are very fascinating indeed in the changes that they produce in our mental state. It was found that these substances could produce a change in mental state closely resembling some forms of insanity, in particular schizophrenia. However, more interest has centered on the very peculiar symptoms that the drug produces in the subject who is otherwise normal. Normal people react to LSD by seeing strange patterns of wildly moving colors. And at other times, the subject may recall with terrifying detail incidents that are long, long forgotten. a loss of the normal cause and effect relationships of things going on in the environment. And this leads to distortion of judgment. One ounce of LSD makes 300,000 doses. An amount of LSD the size of an aspirin tablet can make 3,000 doses. The normal dose is 100 micrograms. An experienced chemist has no difficulty in making it at home. However, we have found that this amateur stuff contains many other substances, dangerous and often deadly. The strength of this amateur stuff is always uncertain. It may contain none or 10, or 100, or 300, or maybe 3,000 micrograms. We have produced convulsions and deaths in animals with large doses of LSD. I took it the first time because I was curious. Under LSD, God's not a faraway idea. He's something that, that's right inside you that you're experiencing now. I took LSD for a kick. Ma'am, LSD is like a vitamin for the brain. I mean, to expand your mind. LSD stimulates creativity in the brain. In other words, it uh, expands your, your thought processes so that you can take in more. We gave a series of 50 tests to people before and after LSD. We found that at the end of six months following their LSD taking, that they were no more creative when we measured them than they were before they took the LSD. However, their feeling, their inner feeling of subjective creativity was there. This means, perhaps, that they may have an impression of creativity, but not creativity itself. Creativity is 90% perspiration and only 10% inspiration. And LSD doesn't enhance one's desire to perspire. LSD is a, is a really groovy way to find out more about the things around you. LSD helps me understand the whole world better. LSD helps you to understand your own mind. 
It releases your mind to you. LSD is a way about finding out about yourself, about your own problem. While there are many things that we don't know about LSD, there are few that we do know. And perhaps the most important one that we do know is that it is absolutely unpredictable who will have a bad experience from LSD or when they will have it. Some people have a bad experience the first time they take the drug. Others take it 30, 60, or even 100 times before their bad trip. And the bad trip, instant insanity, often a never-never land of no return. acutely disturbed. She will be in the hospital for a few weeks or a few months. The chances are that she will get well again, at least well enough to leave the ward. Whether she will ever be the same again, have the same personality, the same ambitions, the same abilities to work, to love, to get along with other people, that we won't know for a long time. Some others who take LSD will have even more tragic freakouts. And there's no way to tell which ones these will be. Many lose all contact with reality. For instance, some forget what height means. And in a turned on or euphoric state, step or attempt to fly from cliffs and high windows with real life, permanent, non-psychedelic results. Other trippers attempt to merge their beings with large, fast automobiles. <laughs> It's up to you. Taking LSD is much the same as playing Russian roulette. You spin the barrel with the one bullet in it, and you take a chance. Any one shot or several. Maybe an exciting and harmless kick. But each time you try, the odds keep growing against you. Until, until that final kick. It's up to you. Life kick. Kick in the head. <laughs> 